Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 389 and it is all about Simply Defined dies. I have my next collection. In case you've never heard of Simply Defined dies, you may have heard of Sizzix and Spellbinders and Memory Box and Lawn Fawn and Creative Expressions, but Simply Defined are my dies. You can only find them here. They're exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple and I design them. So I do one collection a month and it's time for our next collection. I have so much for you. I have so many techniques to do today and I think there's going to be something for every type and every level of crafter. From those of you who are tuning in, tuning into a, a crafting class for the very first time, to those who have been watching for years and years and years, not just me, but all the crafting classes for years and years and years, I'm hoping that there is something in here that makes you go, hmm. <laughs> There may even be a technique that you have potentially seen that you say, I will never, ever do that. But maybe by the end of this class, you're like, huh, I think I could give that a try. You just never know what's going to happen. I have got inks for you. I've got dyes for you. I've got vellum for you. Just a, a whole world of crafty goodness is sitting in front of me. Now, I have winner, winner, chicken dinner sitting right here. And for your chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, you have to post a comment here on this YouTube class. How do you post a comment? Well, it's easy. You just, there's a, there's a little heart somewhere in this vicinity that you just move your cursor over it and a subscribe button will come up and click the subscribe button. Our classes are free. We don't charge for them. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to donate money. You don't have to be a member of anything. The classes we do here are free. They are full length classes, which means, gosh, what would you pay if you had to go take a class at, at, at a shop? Would you pay $25 or $50? Some classes are as high as $100. You don't have to pay anything here and they're commercial free. <laughs> So we're not going to get stopped mid something and have a commercial for I don't know whatever. Come on and interrupt us. Completely commercial free. So if you could just hit the subscribe button to help support Scrapbooking Made Simple and my YouTube channel, I will continue to bring you full length commercial free technique based classes that make both of our hearts happy. Now, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So how do you become a winner, winner, chicken dinner? You have to subscribe and then you have to leave a comment. The comment section is below. <laughs> Just post something nice, friendly, happy, thoughtful, kind, generic. What a, Just nothing that would, if you wouldn't say it to my face, please don't type it. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the rule. Would you really say that to somebody in person? And I suppose if you would, well then go ahead and type it. Doesn't mean I'll approve it because I have to approve all the comments. And then once your comment is approved, you go into the running to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. I give two gift cards away every single week and you are welcome to spend that on anything that makes your heart happy. Please know that Scrapbooking Made Simple while we are uh, here on YouTube and we do have an online store. Really, we are an independent mom and pop shop. So we encourage you to support independent mom and pop shops, which means that if you see some of the product that I'm using today and you have the opportunity to go into a store locally, not Amazon, <laughs> I'm not talking Amazon people, you have an opportunity to go meet your local store owner because they happen to carry this product please shop with them first. We do value all of you as customers, but we also value our peers in this industry. And we want the independent stores to get through and make it and continue on. And for that to happen, they need both of that, us. They need me teaching to all of you and then you going out and supporting them. If you don't have a local independent mom and pop shop, then come online, absolutely, and come visit scrapbookingmadesimple.com and get whatever makes your heart happy. But just know, for our industry to continue, we all have to support and, and encourage and inspire each other.
I think you'll find that on our premieres of our YouTube on Saturdays at 8 a.m. when we do our live chat. You'll find that there's lots of new crafters who are just joining in to the live chat and are a little timid or shy or they're, they, they don't think that they're good enough. Or, but you'll find that the other crafters who have been with us for a long time and on the live chat are helpful and thoughtful and encouraging and want you to have have fun doing this and succeed at whatever you're trying to accomplish. So it's that kind of community that we try to foster here and uh, appreciate all of your understanding of that. So please keep those comments nice. <laughs> now, Mr. SMS is doing okay, doing all right. You know, it's a day at a time, slow. Boy, is it slow, recoup is slow. And, but we're getting, he's getting there and, and he's coming into the, to, to the shop more and more. He's quality controlling right now, which is good because he has to get up and down and up and down. And that's very good exercise for him. Shh, don't tell him it's exercise. Uh, but we do spend most of our time at home. When I'm not here, I'm at home. We don't do anything because we just, right now we don't, we, we stay at home and we watch TV. So we were, we were on a channel the other week and I clicked onto the Gilmore Girls. I have seen every episode of the Gilmore Girls when they originally aired years ago. But Michael doesn't know that. Mr. SMS does not know that. And I was expecting him to give me big grief over watching this because he'd had no idea what the Gilmore Girls were about. I love Lorelai and Rory. I, I, I love the, and Suki. I love them all. <laughs> My gosh, and they're so pretty. Um, and so anyway, we're watching it and and lo and behold, he kind of liked it. But I didn't want to say, well, I've already seen all the episodes. And so it ran into the next episode and we watched that. And, and now every night we watch one episode of the Gilmore Girls, which I am loving because to me, it's like Little House on the Prairie. It's like, it's just wholesome, good fun. It's just, it's just a clean cut, happy show. And uh, we're at the point now where Lorelai and Max didn't get married. And, <laughs> and Luke's girlfriend came back. I don't think Michael really understands that it's kind of a soap opera-y kind of thing, but in good, clean, wholesome fun. So my secret is now your secret. Let's not tell Mr. SMS that I have seen all of the, all seasons of the Gilmore Girls. I'm just so excited. I have a buddy to watch it with now. <laughs> He's my Gilmore Girls buddy. <laughs> watch this and he'll be like, are you kidding me? Love you, Mr. SMS. <laughs> okay, let's do winter, winter chicken dinner and then we'll get started for today. Because like I said, I've got everything from, um, from inks to vellum to opulent paper. Dye. There's just a ton to go through. And I'm going to start very, very, very easy and progressively get harder. Okay. So those of you who are newbies, don't be afraid. You can do this. I promise you, you can. All right. Our first winner, winner chicken dinner is Michelle with one L. See, I thought Michelle could be spelled with one L and not just two. Michelle, Michelle lives in uh, Cleveland. Not really. That's her last name. Michelle Cleveland. <laughs> Hello. I bet you get tired of those jokes, Michelle. I am so sorry. <laughs> but does it really matter because you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner? I don't think it does. Congratulations, Michelle. Look at how well I'm getting around. Still a little pain down there. Still a little, a little at the very bottom, but that's okay. I'm doing so much better. Our next winner, winner, chicken dinner is, well, we've got Savannah. That's her first name. And Michelle's last name was Cleveland. We're just traveling all over the United States today. Savannah, Savannah Casey. Hello, Savannah Casey. You and Michelle Cleveland are winner, winner chicken dinners. <laughs> I love it. That makes my heart happy. <laughs> all right, girls, you have to do nothing to claim your prize with any luck. Fingers crossed. I have already put your winner, winner $25 gift cards in your online account and you are free to spend them on anything that makes your heart happy. Spend it on things you wouldn't normally buy for yourself. Get something, get something extravagant or get something that you've always wanted to try but never would buy it, never. Spend it on that. Don't get Stacy tape, don't be, no, get something that's like, ooh, 
because you never know if you're going to get free money again, right? Okay, time to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? You And look at, look at, you're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Yep, I'm back. In, I'm, I'm slowly getting in the groove. Again, a little pain right down there. It's still a little tweaky, but that's okay. I'm going to work through it. <laughs> All right. Well, if we are ready to get going, I'm going to tilt on down for the day and show you some samples first. And then I want to push my hair back. Show some samples first and then get going. And again, we're going to start super, super, super easy. I don't know if you're going to want to take notes or not, but if you do, let's do a quick pause face. And Victorious Victor at Ellison said, I'm supposed to do, that's my pause face for today. <laughs> Hello, Victorious Victor and Sizzik Sarah. How are you? There's my pause face. Okay, you're back. All right, down we go. Ready? <laughs> down we go. Bye. <laughs> Got to be careful what they ask me to do because you just never know. I might just do it. <laughs> okay. Let's zoom on in and tilt on down just a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay. So let's... Ooh, what do we think? Oh, there are the sirens. This is a new Simply Defined Edge die. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you think? But wait, there's more. This one, nope, this one goes there. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Look at that. But wait, there's more. Oh, look at that. This is a simply defined eye. Isn't that pretty? But wait, I have one more for you. This is the other half of the edge die that goes right. So this die here, this is one die. Well, it's one edge and we've put two together. That goes with this edge die here. So you get both in the package. You'll get both dies. But they do go together. Love this. Honorary SMS girl Katie made this one and it's just beautiful. Okay, so let's get started. What do I have for you today? Well, I have new Simply Defined dies. And yes, this is part of my Pergamano collection. I still feel like I need to go down a little bit. This is part of my Pergamano collection. I've run out of Nana's. <laughs> I usually name my Pergamano collection Nana's something. There's Nana's Garden and Nana's Friendship and Nana's Samplers, and I ran out of Nana's. So now this one is just Elegant Pergamano, but if you want to see all of the other Pergamano dies, you'll look for Nana. <laughs> I have six new dies. That are value priced. $13.99 each, and these are a full A2 size die. So comparable dies out there on the market now are anywhere from, they can be as high as $26 at some places for the same size die. So I've got six new ones. This is the fan die, and oh my gosh, I have given you so many different ways to make so many different things. Crazy. And the six dies that I'm showing you make up the I Want It All bundle. So they're $13.99 if you just like one or two of them. However, if you like all six of them, they come all the way down to $9.99 a die, or roughly $9.99 a die, and you get all six for $59.99. And that is a that is a Wahoo Kachu deal. Then we have my edge dies right here 
And these are sold separately. These are not part of the I Want It All bundle and they do retail for $15.99. So pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put those off to, I'm gonna put those off to the side right now and we're going to get started. I think the very, very first thing I'm gonna do is work with one of the edge dies. And as I said, we're gonna start simple, really, really simple. And I'm just gonna die cut this so you can see what it looks like when it's it's actually cut out. Let me grab, oh, I've got a perfect piece of paper right here. Now my dies, there, there they go again. My dies tend to be very intricate. So precision base plate's going to be required if you're using a Sizzix Big Shot machine or a Sizzix Big Kick machine. If you've got the Vagabond 2, there may be enough pressure that you don't need it. If you've got a Big Shot Plus machine, I'll tell you, Big Shot Plus machines, are you're not supposed to need the precision base plate. But depending on how much you use your machine and how how loose your machine is, there may come a time where you need a precision base plate. They're not, it's not something that is in, uh, that Ellison or Sizzix says you need for your Big Shot Plus, but if it's, if it's older or you've used it a lot, you may find yourself needing a precision base plate. And that's what this is. We're gonna put these on sale for you in case you don't have one because quite often most of my dies really do need a precision base plate. Now, if you've got one of the older versions, version one or two, which doesn't have the chrome on it, it has kind of a black matte finish to it or a more of a black shiny finish to it, those are gonna work just fine. You really just need one and it should last you a really, really long time. We are using the Sizzix Big Shot today. Will my dies work with other machines? Sure. A Platinum 6, a Platinum 8, a Sizzix Express machine, absolutely. A, gosh, these will even fit a Cuddlebug machine. They'll fit a Gemini machine. What, may, what machine do you have? Chances are these are gonna go through without any problem. But on a Sizzix Big Shot or Big Kick machine, a precision base plate is necessary. Also, with the new Big Shot machines, they're sold with the uh, platform. Here's your base platform and a solo shim adapter on the top. It comes with it together. These are what you're going to need to run wafer thin dies through. And that's what my dies are. They're considered wafer thin dies just because they are wafer thin. So these two will always work together if you're using a wafer die. But if you're doing something else like a, uh, ooh, let's see, a embossing folder, well then you would just need the platform without the solo shim. The only time you need this is if you're using a wafer style die. I have got some white paper here and my precision base plate. Please remember when using a precision base plate, whether it be this plate or one of the earlier versions, the plate always, the, the, the metal always needs to be facing you. If you can read the directions, you're doing it wrong. I need you to stop and flip it over so that metal is facing you. This is the chrome one. It sells for a little bit more than the original ones, but it doesn't, it doesn't, the die doesn't cut into it at all. Some people, it really doesn't matter if you've got the older one, it doesn't. Now I'm gonna put my die right on here and kind of at an angle, just so I don't hear a thump when I cut it and I'm gonna send it right on through. So at the end, I can choose to rotate it if I want to and just do a little bit of a rotate and then send it on back. All right, let's see what I've got. Oh, Mr. SMS's floor is gonna look like a hot mess today. <laughs> I really should get a room buffer in here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here it is. And it looks okay, but it's missing an awful lot of detail. I mean, you can tell that those are supposed to be flowers, but where's the detail to the flowers? These dies are mainly, wow, there's really something going on out there. These dies were designed to do a an embossing 
or a Pergamano effect. That's the whole idea behind this entire set of dies, plus all of my previous sets of Nana's Garden and Nana's Friendship and Nana's Sampler, is that they're meant to do Pergamano. And if you don't know what Pergamano is, don't worry, we'll get there. But what if you're just starting out and you just wanna cut pretty things and make them pretty? Well, that's what you're gonna get if you just cut this out by itself. But what if I were to click it back into place? Because dies do that. The die cut will kind of click back into place. See, I've clicked it back into place and now it doesn't wanna move. And what if I took this and I used some ink in all of those places you see white paper. I can ink that and actually use the die as a stencil. So now I've die cut the shape and now I can use it as a stencil. Let's see, let me grab, hmm, what colors do we like? Let's grab red, let's grab a little bit of yellow. grab a little bit of yellow and a little bit of we'll go dark red and I'm just gonna use memento inks remember I used memento last week and I said I wasn't putting them on sale because they were gonna go on sale this week guess what they're on sale and they're 20% off what's a memento ink this is the dewdrop size so memento is a dye based ink that does not move with water which is lovely if you are using alcohol markers with it or any kind of an alcohol ink with it because it won't move they're just 36 easy peasy colors that look great together they're inexpensive these are two dollars and 29 cents and then we're taking 20 percent off of it so it brings it down to like somewhere around a buck 80 i think and they can be re-inked Every color you see here that I'm playing with today also comes in a full size pad. I just don't know that you want a teal zeal in a full size pad. Maybe you don't want to spend the $7 for a teal zeal full size pad, but for a buck 80, hey, I don't mind having that color in my arsenal, right? And because you can re-ink them with the re-inker, well, they, they never go bad. I ever. I mean, that re-inker is going to last you about a lifetime because the pads are small. Now, I'm going to start with my yellow, and I've got a little finger dauber. And I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to kind of add some color, just kind of some yellow, just kind of everywhere. I always start with kind of a base color. That way, if for some reason I don't ink with one of the other colors exactly correct, like I get the whole thing done in the green or the red, I don't have to worry because that yellow is just going to fill that little white space in nice and neat and nobody's going to notice. Oh, you know what? I'm only going to do half of it. I'm going to leave this bottom half alone just so you can see what the difference is. That's a good idea, huh, Stacy? Good thing I thought of it just just in the nick of time. All right, I've got some yellow on there. Now let's throw on some red. Finger daubers are really the ideal way to add the color as opposed to one of your blending brushes. We're not trying to blend and soften and move color out. We're trying to get color in. We've got to go below the dye. We've got to get under the dye. And, oh, I don't want to do it there, but I do want to do it here. Got to go kind of below the dye and get color in. And the blending brushes, while good to do beautiful backgrounds and stenciling with open stencils, this a little bit, because of the, the, um, the openings are a little bit smaller, you may just want to stick with your finger daubers. Now, we sell finger daubers, I think, cheaper than anybody else. I'll tell you the best value is like this. You get 20, 20 daubers for $9.99. I know that there are places that sell three dollars or three daubers for $4.99. That's crazy, but okay. We just really try to keep crafting affordable here. We do sell them in the case. I do have them in the case. And you get 40 daubers in the case for, I think, $23.99, which I still think is cheaper than almost anybody out there. I can't think of anybody who's got them for more or less than that, but it's possible. I don't like shop competition. Okay, so now I've added some green and I've got my yellow going. Maybe add a little bit more yellow to my mix. 
just to kind of blend all my colors together. And there's no right or wrong. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just going and doing. Remember when I said it's only paper? I mean it. It's only paper. If you do it and you don't like it, what's the worst thing that it's cost you? A little bit of your time and some paper. All right. That's where I'm at. I've stenciled right here, but I have left the bottom plane to give you an idea of what you're going to be seeing the difference so you can see the difference in just by adding a little bit of ink. Uh-huh. That's a pretty dramatic difference, right? All I did was add a little bit of ink, three colors of memento, blended them together, but there's the blah at the bottom. Blah. Ooh. Blah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so easy peasy, mac and cheesy, right? That didn't take long to do. Uh, do I have a piece of paper that I can put this on? Not the best free hand cut. Oh, don't lose that paper. Holy smokes, artichokes. Paper just about went underneath. Okay. So what if I wanted to go back and finish this now that it's done? Remember, dies click right back into place. Click. Turn it over and I can finish what I've started. And I'm going to go much faster this time because I want you to see that it really does not take much time at all to color. Get my yellow down and you don't have to start with a base coat. I just have always been taught, or I always did, started with some sort of a base coat. Okay, there's my yellow. There's my red. Here's my green. And just for giggles, I'll go over it all with my yellow again, just so it blends all together. And poof. Ooh, pretty. Do you like? So I could do another one on this side. So we start there. Super simple, super easy, didn't take much time, didn't take much effort, and didn't take a whole lot of skill. <laughs> Perfect for the beginning crafter. You do have to have a die cutting machine, but you took a boring piece of white paper and you made that. You can do this, but let's take it to the next step, shall we? Okay. Let's say we wanted to use, um, well, let's say we wanted to emboss this. Hmm. Well, let's do it on pattern paper first. I'm going to grab some pattern paper. So I've got this creative pad from P, I think the company's called P13. Beautiful paper, it's pretty bold. It's kind of got the look like it's got foil going on. Love the colors. They're a little bit bolder colors than and designs than the Craft Consortium ink drop papers. So this one's a little bit more pow wow wow in your face. But I kind of like the pow wow wow in your face. What if I took this sheet here they're double-sided, so I have an opportunity to choose either side. I'm going to tape this down just in one spot, just so, or in a couple, in a spot, just so it stays. All 
Okay, good enough. I just wanted it so I didn't have to hold it. So I'm going to put that to the side, and I'm going to take that exact same die, and I am going to die cut again. Fits there beautifully. So I can just trim my paper right on down, put my excess off to the side, and bring my machine on over. And I'm just going to wash, rinse, and repeat, which means I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Instead of using white paper, I'm using a patterned paper. Put it right down on my, my base platform with my solo shim. If you happen to have one of the uh, multi-purpose platforms that has the hinges, you're going to keep all tabs closed. You're just going to close up the whole little, the whole little book and kind of turn it to the side at an angle and send it on through. You always want to put it at an angle. Your die is at an angle if you get the opportunity to do so. It allows for the die to feed into the machine in a way that doesn't cause it to go a big thump. And you also want to, if you can, do just a quick little rotate and send it back through your machine. Why do you do that? Because every machine has a different sweet spot. There's a roller underneath here, and every roller has a different sweet spot. Your, your sweet spot where it adds the most pressure to your die might be right in the center. Mine might be to here, or this side, or that side. But if you change the way your die feeds into the machine, chances are it's going to hit that sweet spot, either going one way or going the other, giving you a good cut each and every time. Nobody likes cutting and going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and still not having it cut all the little bits and pieces out, right? Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Okay, so same thing kind of like the white. It's kind of hard to decide what that really is. What shapes are those in there? It's still pretty, but you really can't decide what kind of shape is in there. Now to ink it, you could, but you've already got so much pattern going on. Inking it maybe with a black ink would give you the opportunity to see the design, but it would sure be hard to go in there with the reds and the greens and the yellows because that paper is so already designed out. <laughs> it's got so much going on, it's busy already. But what if I clicked it right back into place and I used my squishy and my knock-knock. What's a squishy and a knock-knock? Well, that's not what they call them, and Sizzix Ellison would really prefer I not call them this, but this is a squishy. See? Get why it's called a squishy? And this is a knock-knock. These are two peas in a pod. We use these together all the time. They're meant to be used together. You really don't use one without the other. Very, very, very rarely do you use one without the other. And this gives a whole new meaning to your dies. Whereas in the first time we took and we inked, we inked in all of the open spaces. This time I'm going to emboss all of those open spaces. So if you have got dies from other manufacturers where there is no cut line, there's an opening, but there's no cut line, meaning that the piece does not fall out what did they intend for you to do? They intended for you to use it as either a stencil or an embossing feature. But to use it as an embossing feature with a Sizzix machine, any Sizzix machine, your Plus, your Pro, your Vagabond, your your, the switch isn't out yet. Maybe early September, September sometime. If you're looking for a Sizzix switch machine, not until at least September, hopefully. <laughs> now remember, I showed off that machine last year, last February, it's been over a year, so maybe September we're gonna be looking at getting the, at the switch machines being released. But it doesn't matter what machine you have from Sizzix, you need a squishy and a knock-knock. A Vagabond, you still need a squishy and a knock-knock. What do we do with the squishy and the knock-knock? Well, we're going to emboss we are not going to need our precision base plate to make that happen. We do still need to keep our solo shim on our machine because this is still a wafer style die. 
I have a do not cut plate down first and a do not cut plate isn't anything special. You don't go out and go to Sizzix.com and type in do not cut plate because nothing's going to come up. It's just another set of cutting plates that you try not to cut into. It allows one plate to never warp as opposed to this plate that has oodles and oodles of cuts and will eventually begin to warp. You want a plate that you, that at least one of them is nice and flat and it helps feed through the machine easier. So I've got my die with the paper in it and where I cut like this the first time, this time I'm just gonna flip it over and have the paper facing me. Make sure I'm locked in. Then I'm gonna take my squishy and my knock knock and go through. Are you ready? It's not taking it. Why? Because when you use a squishy and a knock knock, you've got to get rid of the solo shim. Everybody wants to keep this on because it's a wafer die, therefore you need to keep it on and you need to send it through, but your machine will not take it. You need to take it off and if you look right here, it tells you that you use a silicone, <laughs> a silicone pad, which is the squishy, and a texture plate, which is the knock-knock. Now, if I layer it, and I send it through, it's going to be fine. And the key to know you're doing it right is that the squishy comes out the back end. My squishy is coming out the back end. It's growing. That silicone that I was able to do this with is compressing into those open spaces of the die. Can you see how it's growing? It, it's, now it's way out. And is every time I put it through the roller, it keeps getting longer and longer and longer. If your squishy's coming out the back end, you know you're doing it right. And you really only have to run it through once. So what's happened now is the design has been embossed right onto my paper. Hard to see, I know. But then you just take a sand it gadget or a um, not a heavy grit of sandpaper, uh, emery board for your nails perhaps, and you just hit the top. And where that paper was compressed up, where it embossed, that sandpaper is going to hit it and you're able to sand off so you can see the design. So I'm going to do about half of it and leave the rest of it so that you can see the difference. So down here, no design. Down here, no design. But as I go up, now the design from the die is right there for you to see. Any double-sided printed paper starts as white paper, so you can sand it. And don't sand too much, because remember, it's papered. You'll sand all the way through. But I went from just being blah, where you can't see any of the design, all the way up to where you can. So let's do that again faster. Let's do that quicker so you can see everything that I did and how long it actually takes to do. I need to start with a cut, so I do need my solo shim. Let's grab that paper. Let's do the blue. Blue is awful pretty, isn't it? Ooh, very pretty. Let's cut that off.
I think I'm going to do it that way. Cut that off. I'm going to take my precision base plate first with my solo shim, put it down, put my paper, put my die, put it at a slight angle, put my do not cut over the top. and let's send it on through. So I'm just die cutting it. All right, it's all the way through. Open it up, do a slight rotate. Look at, I just twisted it. That's all I did and send it back. Now while the paper, I can get rid of the excess, any excess, Ooh, there we go. While the paper is still in the die, I'm going to take off my precision base plate, I'm going to take off my solo shim, I'm going to put my do not cut plate right down, I'm going to put my die with the paper face up this time. When you're cutting against a precision base plate, the die is face down. When you're using a squishy and knock knock, the paper is face up. Put my squishy, put my knock knock, send it through. And again, let's watch. Oh, can you see? Oh, you can, you can see. Can you see the squishy coming out the back end? It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's a winner, winner chicken dinner. Let's take this off. Move this out of my way, pull this over, pop that on out, get rid of all the pieces. Again, a little hard to see that it's embossed until we hit it with the magic and the magic is a piece of sandpaper. And then all of a sudden, that detail that you were missing becomes apparent. So an emery board, just don't use a very heavy grit of sandpaper because again, this is just paper. You're not sanding wood. And if you sand, 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 at some point you will have sanded through your sheet of paper. sudden the detail has come through pretty just using paper you already have pattern paper. Look at how beautiful it is when it's done just using the embossing feature. So very simple, but we're not done. Let's take, um, let's take this die. Let's take this one. And this time, let's cut something other than pattern paper or cardstock. Let's use our opulent paper. So I have got some Sizzix opulent paper. Is this all the, oh, I think I'm gonna use this one. Ooh, oh, and I'm gonna use this one. Okay, so I've got Sizzix opulent paper. Uh, opulent paper, there's, well, there's now six different packs 
This is the charcoal pack. The mystical is out of stock right now, but I've got six different or five different packs. There's rose gold, charcoal, ivory, which is really white, gold, and silver. In each pack, there is 10 sheets of five different specialty finishes. And you can see them right there. All five finishes are there for you to see. This is beautiful, beautiful paper. I use it again and again and again. It's a go-to for me because it just is elegant. Here's the rose gold. So you've got this glitter, but isn't glitter. It feels just like suede. It's beautiful. A satin and a mirror and a pearlescent and a matte. I am using the brushed. This is the brushed right now. So let's go ahead and, oh, I don't think I can get two out of it. Do I have another piece of brushed? Hmm. Just in case I want to cut two. That looks like a piece of brushed. Yep, oh, no, that looks like gold. That is gold. Okay, well, we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one. So right now, all I'm going to do is cut. Bring over my Big Shot machine. I've got my base platform. I need to add my solo shim and I need to add my precision base plate because all I'm doing is cutting. And let's run it through. Put it at a little bit of an angle. Oh, am I? Oh, well, we're going to go for it. So one, rotate, two. Now, mind you, we haven't even gotten to what the dies were meant to do yet. We haven't even gotten to the Pergamano part of this yet. Let's go ahead and pull it on out and see what we've got. Get all the little bits and pieces out. All the fallouts. Like I said, Mr. SMS's floor. <laughs> I do try to hit the trash can. Honest to gosh, I do. <laughs> I was a soccer player, not a basketball player. <laughs> all right. So let's just do that and this is what I've got so again pretty but what are these shapes supposed to be oh okay so let's grab another piece of that I'm gonna do apples to apples to apples okay so here I've got another whole piece and let's do apples to apples to apples so I'm gonna cut myself another piece I'm gonna die cut it one more time actually I'm gonna die cut it twice super fast I'm just gonna get it in and get it out. Machine over, die in. This is my version of fast forwarding. Since we don't edit, I can't speed it up for you. You just kinda have to, oh, I didn't rotate it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do a quick little rotate and send it back. Ooh, I hear it cutting. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to have the exact same thing. I'm going to have the exact same thing as this one. But I don't want it so plain. I want to get that detail in. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take off my precision base plate. I'm going to take off my solo shim and I'm going to bring back 
my squishy and my knock knock. So I've got a cutting plate, my do not cut plate down. Remember, since there's no precision base plate, my metal has to go down. My metal, my die faces, my die faces up when I'm using my squishy and my knock knock and a precision base plate, it faces down. So now I've got the paper facing me, even though it's the white paper, I'm gonna put my squishy and my knock knock and send it on through. Squishy's coming out the back end. That makes my heart happy. <laughs> I drink coffee. So, well, no, TMI. TMI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's move this over and let's pull it out. Now, can you see that that paper has been pushed in to all of those spaces? So let's see the difference. Let's do apples to apples to apples. I'm gonna keep using, I'm gonna use the same die. So you get die cut with no squishy and knock knock. Die cut with squishy and knock knock. Do you see all the dimension? Do you see what you don't get here? Apples to apples, look at the difference. Just by rolling it through with a squishy and a knock knock. If you have a big shot machine or a vagabond or a plus or a pro or a big kick or whatever you've got, if it's a Sizzix, a vintage machine from Sizzix, um, a fabby machine from Sizzix, if you were doing felt and if you were doing quilts, they're all the same machine, they're just named different things. But look at the difference you can do. Just die cut, die cut with a squishy and a knock knock. Let's go one step further. So let me cut another piece. I need to die cut first, so no squishy and knock knock. Bring my machine on over. Put my solo shim down. Put my precision base plate down. So we'll put the precision base plate and the squishy and knock knocks on the YouTube. Yummy, I'm reminding myself of that. So I remember to do it. And send it on through. When I get to the end, I'm just gonna do a quick rotate. I may not need to have done the rotate, but my goodness, it's always better to do it and not need it than to be done, think you're done, try and pull the die out and find you have little bits and pieces that aren't falling out easy peasy. Okay, so right now I am at Right now, I'm at this stage right here. Blah, 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 blah. I wanna make it a little bit nicer. So take off my precision base plate. Take off my solo shim. Add a cut plate or my do not cut plate. Can't put the die face down anymore. The precision base plate isn't there. Flip it over. I can take off the extra paper if I want and bring back my squishy and my knock knock and send it through. If I try to add another clear plate to the top, you will find the machine will not take it. It's too thick. That's the beautiful thing about a big shot machine is that it won't let you send something through if it's too thick. It just won't take it. So now my squishy is gonna come out my back end and you can watch it grow and get longer and get longer. 
That's your telltale sign. Ha ha, telltale, get it? Because <laughs> it's coming out the back end that you're doing it right. Okay, I just lost about half of you from my humor. Okay, I can live with that. <laughs> All right, so now we are right here. But I want to make it even more. Now this is a coated paper, non-porous. Can't use a dye-based ink on it because it will not dry. It would dry if I put dye-based ink on the back because this is paper. But that white paper's been coated with this beautiful rose gold metal finish. Beautiful. You have to use something that is for non-porous paper or non-porous items, plastic, glass, metal, opulent paper. So I'm gonna grab my stays on my stays on midi i'm just going to use black i'm going to take my dauber stays on is meant it's a permanent ink it is an alcohol based ink which means it dries like that so it dries on non-porous things it doesn't need to sink in and like a dye based ink does with a paper it needs to sit on top and dry super fast and that is what a stays on does it stays on if you think of big markers or sharpie markers what do you write on with those you write on your metals and your plastic and your kid's lunchbox and his thermos well that's the same type of ink that's in here so i take my dauber and i'm going to do i'm going to do half of this too and i go in and remember, just like we did on this one, I'm going to now use all those openings as a stencil. Some of the big pieces I don't have to do. Some of the big pieces come out. And you can see my thick paper's not coming out. It's kind of wedged in there, which is kind of nice. And I'm using my stays on and my dauber. Can you take this and go over the top? No, it doesn't hit the paper enough. It just makes a mess. It, it really does. Just take your dauber and go right in there with your finger dauber. And I'm gonna do, I might even do a little bit in there just to distress that a little bit. So I'm gonna do one half. And we're good. So I want to show you the difference and then I will go back and finish it. So I've done half. And yes, this is metal. So what's going to happen? The stays on is going to stays on. But don't worry, we're going to take care of that. Oh, you can see where I, <laughs> where there was the opening and I went. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. Lid on that and pop this on out. Get all my little bits and pieces. And you're able to see the difference. Where I have where I've stenciled with the stays on, you can see it. But where I haven't stenciled, you can just see the embossing. Which do you like better? Now, stays on comes in, a, we sell it in 12 different colors. I could have done it with any of the colors, but I chose black. Do you like it better just plain? Or do you like it better stenciled? You know what? You don't have to choose. You can do both. <laughs> Isn't that a Wahoo Kachu, right? You can do both. Now, let's say you do like it all stenciled out. All right, let's pop that bad boy back in. Turn it over, 
and let's finish. It won't take me but a second to finish. Just going in with the ink and layering it right on top. Kind of doing a little distressing on that center piece. flowers. Are we good? And because this is an alcohol-based product, the ink is, it dries really fast. All right, done. Looks like a hot mess there. Looks beautiful there. All done with my stays on. Let's map this up and let's grab a piece of, um, ooh, let's grab a piece of, get all my little bits and pieces out. Let's grab a piece of the charcoal opulent Let's mat that on this. Okay, how to get that on there really fast and easy? Sticky dots. Sticky dots are your friend, no question about it. Sticky dots. These are a sheet of hundreds of thousands of little dots. They're mine, they're simply defined. You're not gonna find them anywhere else. I forgot to put my little, my little tape on there to open it. Oh, there we go. Oh, and I've got some maker's tape right here. So an easy way to get your opening and not my idea. Got to give credit where credit is due. It was from one of um, one of you out there, one of the SMS peeps who said, put a piece of washi tape on both sides of the sticky dots. And it will make, oh, the washi tape's really... It will make it easier to open. Much easier. Okay, so on one side is literally hundreds of thousands of little sticky dots, and on the other side is just the liner. I wanna put that down. It's very intricate. Where are you gonna put the tape? Are you just gonna put it in the middle? How are you gonna do this? No problem. We're gonna take it, put it right down, Close it up, give a burnish. Now my sticky dots, you get 10 sheets for $9.99. And I know, first off, I know they're very hard to find. They're not an easy item to, to locate. But if you can locate them, I know nobody's got anything like it for that kind of price. These are eight and a half by 11 sheets. Now I'm just gonna line it right up here. And Bam, my intricate die is now glued down. Can't get much faster than that. And then I am going to trim it out. And So I think I did that by hand probably as fast as somebody would do it by a trimmer. And I'm okay having my things hand trimmed out. It's a handmade item. It's, and I think I'm gonna do one more matte because I think it would look beautiful. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So this is another sheet that's in the rose gold opulent pad. Or the pack, oh my gosh, okay. This, I don't have to because this is a solid piece. I can just use Stacy Tape or your favorite adhesive to get it down and you would do a much better job than I am. I'm just gonna put some down so I can get it down and show you. You would certainly 
put it all the way around. Now it's actually sticking out off that end. I'm not going to bother to cut it off. It's double stick tape. So the minute I peel it off, I just fold it right back into itself and we're fine. Stacy tape can be torn. You don't have to use scissors. It holds glass, it holds beads, it holds metal, it holds plastic, it holds fabric, it holds paper, it holds chipboard. And Again, I think I can almost freehand as fast as some people take to use a trimmer. Is it 100% straight? Probably not. Definitely not. But sometimes using a trimmer, it's not 100% straight either. <laughs> okay. Now I could stamp a sentiment in the center with stays on. Absolutely. This die comes with little matting pieces. So I could nest inside. It comes with three matting little nesting dies. But I went from here to here where it's now embossed and you can actually see the detail versus it just being plain. To here. And we haven't even used the die for what the die's intent was. What do you think? Pretty easy peasy, right? From basic to a little bit more to a little bit more. You can do this. All I've used was paper, some inks at a buck 80 and a uh, stays on. This is like a, I think this is 4 dollars or 5 dollars and then it, the black will be on sale. The biggest investment you're gonna have is the dies and the die cutting machine. But once you own the dies and the die cutting machine, well, the whole world has opened up to you. You can, I mean, you can use these for anything. You can make cards, you can make scrapbooks, you can make mini albums. Wouldn't this be a beautiful front for a mini album? You, you can do altered art. You've, you've got options. And now I need to clean this. All right, let's clean that. Paper towel, dye, Marabou hand sanitizer in the Couture Creations bottle, which are almost here. <laughs> best, best mister I have ever found. Spray, spray, spray. Wipe, wipe, wipe. And poof. Dies clean. Hand sanitizer is made up of alcohol. Alcohol and alcohol cancel each other out. Easy cleanup, done. Good as new. All right, but it's time to move on. Now we actually have to start playing with vellum. Let's talk about vellum really quickly. Let me find my vellum. Let's get a couple sheets out here. Vellum. Not all vellum is the same. This is, most vellum is very lightweight and the idea is that you would maybe have an invitation written here and you'd put the vellum over the top so it kind of softens it and diffuses it and makes it look very, very elegant. And a thin vellum is perfect for that. My vellum is a parchment vellum. Do you hear how thick that is? This is a very thin thick vellum and it's meant to do pergamano. If you do pergamano and you are having trouble finding parchment vellum, hello! <laughs> and I love pergamano. Pergamano is a type of crafting where you take uh, stencils or 
a pattern and you draw the pattern out on vellum with a white pen and then you take little piercers and they have piercers that come in all different one of them is just a single piercer and another one has like a little arch to it and they're just the tiniest little piercers and you pierce into the pattern almost making it look like when you pushed holes through a light bright and then behind it the 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 color of whatever's behind it comes through it also is where you take a stylus tool and you change the vellum from a translucent color to more of an opaque color by adding pressure. It is beautiful. It is so time consuming. Pergamono is beautiful, stunning. It can take weeks, weeks to do one project, one card. The time and effort that goes into it is must be respected. If you see somebody doing Pergamono, even if it's not your kind of crafting, you must give them their due respect for the effort they have put into that project because it is beautiful. I wanted to cheat, just a little. I wanted to shortcut it because I don't have three weeks to do, <laughs> I don't. So that is where my dies come into play. Now, vellum. Like I said, all vellum is not the same. And vellum, no matter whose vellum it is, does not like water. Does not like liquid. Any liquid. Let's see what happens. It's kind of like a fish, one of those fish things in your hands. And if it if it tilts up, it means one thing, and if it tilts down, it means another. Can you see the vel? Can you see how much it's curling? So I misted it with some water. And can you see what's happened? Vellum needs to stay as dry as possible, or this is what you are going to get. That was just with a quick mist of water. Doesn't matter who's vellum, that's what you're going to get. Vellum and water are, are, they don't get along, they don't like each other, they don't play in the same sandbox at all. In fact, now I need to wipe down my table because I don't want water on my vellum. Vellum also is a hybrid. It's kind of a plastic, kind of a paper. It does not, it does not like all kinds of inks. So a dye-based ink is going to have a very hard time. You can, can there you can see, can you see how wet it is? A di, even a single, a dye-based ink is going to have a very hard time drawing on vellum because a dye-based ink wants to sink into something. It wants to sink down into and not stand on top of. So this is, it, it just really isn't going to dry. A pigment-based ink is not going to dry alone on a vellum. You could throw embossing powder over the top and do that, but on its own, it's just not going to dry. I can set that over there and come back and you can still see the shine to it because it is still wet. And I can still move it, move it around. Doesn't like dye-based types of ink. It doesn't mind a stays-on type of ink because a stays-on type of ink, of course, is an alcohol-based ink and is going to dry much faster. So you can stamp with a stays-on if you're gonna ink up a stamp and stamp with a stays on type of ink and you'll have much, much better success. But I wanted to play with the vellum. I think we will start with, I think we're gonna start with this one. So this is another one of my dies. And can you see all those little holes? I think I'm gonna cut this, ooh, that's by a hair of a chinny chin chin. See if I can cut it without it moving. Otherwise, I'll get a new piece of vellum out. 
So I think I'm going to cut this a couple times really quickly. So again, we're doing apples to apples to apples. All right, so bring my machine over and don't need my squishy and my knock knock right now. So I'm going to put that off to the side. I don't, I do need my precision base plate. Yes. And I do need my solo shim. So I'm going to start with my base platform right here. I'm going to put down my solo shim, my precision base plate face up. Then I'm going to take my die and my vellum face down. My die is now facing down. And I'm going to roll it on through and hope that I don't move it. Can you put a precision base plate on top of a magnetic platform? You can. It then causes the magnetic platform to lose its purpose. It's no longer magnet anymore for you. The precision base plate has taken the place and you, you, it, it's no longer magnetized if you put your die down on top of it. Can you do it? Yes. Does Sizzix recommend it? No. <laughs> is there any benefit to it? Only if your precision base plate is like right there in your hand. Okay, so I'm going to line this back up. Wish me luck. And I'm going to rotate it and send it back through again and hopefully not get a double cut. But you never know what's going to happen. Ooh, I have a feeling I might have double cut. Since they're not edited, we do it together. What you see is what you get. And know that not everything works out perfect. Except for this time. <laughs> okay. So. I get all my little dots and all my little dashes out. And it's a very pretty die all by itself. Do you really need to do anything else to it? No, it's a very pretty die just on its own. But I'm going to cut it again because, again, I want apples to apples to apples. Ooh, wow, I've got a mess going on. In fact, I'm going to cut it two times. So we're just going to cut it bam and bam. Ooh, big piece of paper. Didn't need to use such a big piece of paper. Okay, let's just send it on through and be done. So roll it through. And then put it back into its little place, which it looks like it never left. Kind of rotate it and send it back. Sounds like a double cut. And again, no. Well, happy day for me. All right. And I want to keep this one handy because I might use that one again. So get rid of all my little, my little dots and dashes. All my little pieces, look at how they just so nicely fall out. Isn't that a happy day? So now I've got two peas of a pod. Exact same thing. Exact same. Bookmarks. Or bookends. I want to use the Pergamano element of this die. And you can see that Pergamano element when I put my die back into my little, my die cut back in click it back into place and then every place that I would maybe emboss like or stencil like I was doing before this time I'm going to use a stylus tool now I am thrilled to say I found and it's by Wendy Vecchi I found stylus tools too where you get four different tips and I gosh maybe they're $3.99 or something like that 
Oh my gosh, very happy to have these. Love these. I'm gonna take both of them out. These are just little styluses that have little balls at the end of them. And because you get two, you get four different ball tips. I know some people, you know, some manufacturers have these for, with a little pad for 16, 17, 18, 19 dollars. I'm just gonna use my squishy. So if you've got something that, um, or my knock knock, no, it's not squishy or a knock knock, my gush pad. <laughs> I knew I'd get there someday, my gush pad. I'm just gonna use my gush pad. If you've got some type of foam that you can then lay your die on top of and where I see the red coming through, where I see the red the, through the vellum. Don't care about this red, there's nothing there to do. But where I see the red coming through the vellum is where I take my stylus with the little ball and just go in there and give a little pressure. A little pressure and a little swirl. A little pressure and a little swirl. Only where I see the red coming through the vellum. If I don't see the red coming through the vellum, there's nothing there for you to do. And how long does this take? Um, about, I don't know, less than a tenth of the time it takes you if you were going to do this in a traditional Pergamano fashion. So I'm gonna do about half of this die. I have got all of these little diamonds coming up the side here that you can see the red coming through the vellum. I'm just gonna take this little ball and I'm just gonna hit them. Now you, you're gonna get used to the pressure a little bit because you don't wanna punch all the way through the vellum. If you do, it's not the end of the world and you will learn your pressure and the pressure is gonna depend upon how much gush you've got in your mat. You wanna have a mat that's not totally firm because you need that ball to sink down in. Just like if we were stamping, you want that stamp to sink into the paper. And the best way to do that is to have some give underneath it. So I'm almost done doing this one row, but if I were doing this via traditional Pergamano, I would still be drawing. <laughs> Stem the tracing over the design. I wouldn't have even come close to starting yet, but I do want to do half. So you can see. And I'm just putting my ball in the little hole and giving a little pressure. Just a little pressure, just a little, a little round circle. Just making a little circle with my ball. And if you worry about poking through, always use one of the larger sizes of the balls. Don't use the super small one because that one's easier to poke through. Sometimes the detail is such that you need to use that small one. Okay, so I've done half of it. I want you to see the difference in the design. Can you see how I've taken the paper and made it white? I've taken that vellum and transferred it by adding that pressure. It changes the vellum from translucent to more opaque. Can you see all the little, can you see all that detail? As opposed to plain detail. Plain. Now it didn't take me very long to do at all. And I can go back, maybe I only need one, and I can go back and click it back into shape. And once it's clicked in, oh it's upside down, once it's clicked in it doesn't move. There we go. And now I've got detail in my peacock. See, you can see the red coming through it, where I can then take my stylus and same thing. Just go in there 
and add pressure until you see the vellum go from translucent to white. This does not take long and it is not hard, but the results are stunning. And I can switch back between the sizes of the balls to make sure that I've got everything in there. And now I've added detail. So I was here. And now I'm there. It's a dramatic difference for an extra maybe five minutes of your time to get it all done. Hmm. Okay. So let's throw it back in. And let's go quick. So I'm just doing little, little surface circles where I see the red coming through the vellum. And I'm just going to zip right through this like I'm on speed dial. So you can see how fast it really is. Whenever you're teaching something, it, it always takes longer because I want to be sure that you see all the steps. But when you're doing it at home, once you've got the concept and you've got the pressure, you just zoom, 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 zoom. Now don't tell anybody you zoom, 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 zoom. They don't need to know that this really only took you five minutes to do. <laughs> don't tell them. Let them appreciate your effort. Okay, those are all done. Now all I have to do are the ones here in my little corner. And you just want a good mat that's got some pressure to, or some give to it, so that when you add your pressure, it changes the vellum. And that's why it needs to be extra heavy weight. If this was a thin vellum, you would just pop right through it. Okay. It just adds that finishing, beautiful touch. But we're not done. What if you wanted to color this? Well, yes, you could get your stays on out. And I showed you that Memento is going to stay wet. Is it still wet? Memento is going to stay wet. Unless you wait. Let me show you. So now I want to color this, but all I have are memento inks, a dye based ink. It's not so much the fact of whether it be a, a, a Stampin' Up ink or a memento ink or a lawn fawn ink. It matters how you put it on. If I go too thick, it will wipe off. However, if I use a finger dauber, and I am gentle with how much I put on, almost like I am just staining the paper, not, not coloring it. I'm not expecting that color to, stay, to, to be heavy. I'm staining, pretend like you're staining your cabinets or a table or you're just adding color and then moving it around lightly, just the hint of the color to stain. So now I've added just a little bit of yellow. Let's go in. Let's add a little bit of blue. Actually, I'm going to leave it on the white. And it's not that I've got so much ink on this. Really, all I'm trying to do is kind of 
stain the vellum. I want to keep it as dry as possible so that the color is not wet. It's gone on top of the vellum, yet it's been put down in such a light coat. that it's not, it's not sitting on top of, it's drying really fast because of how thin the coat is. And I'm just using my mementos. It's all about the finger dauber, people. I can't tell you how much it's about the finger dauber. somewhere. Is that a purple one? All about the finger daubers because we're staining. We're lightly putting the color on. There's not enough color left for it to to smudge and smear. And I'm coming back and blending them a little bit. Lovely stencil, makes a beautiful stencil. And then let's add a little bit, let's add a little bit of yellow to my peacock. Just a little bit, just to stain. So I'm wiping off almost as much as I'm putting on. And then let's add maybe a little bit Little bit of the blue. See how I'm, I'm wiping off almost as much as I'm putting on because all I wanted to do is leave a hint of color. And then let's do my branch. Now it'll make a beautiful stencil. You could just use this as a beautiful stencil. Okay. So now I've added just a bit of color that doesn't come off because I stained the vellum. I didn't stamp on it. I didn't get it so wet that it was shiny. I just added a hint, a hint of color. Hmm. Well, now the purple disappears. Let's see. Oh, way too yellow. How about this darker yellow? I got it all over my hands, but pink is not bad. Should not have it. Oh, I dipped it in here. Okay, well, so be it. So I've taken and added my Pergamano detail and colored on top. But what if you're working with a dye like the first one we worked with? Let's do that one real quick. Let me put the lids on so I don't get it everywhere. So let's take the die that I, that I did earlier that did the beautiful, beautiful... Let's use this die, only let's use it with the vellum. Okay, so I've got a piece of vellum right here. I can get two. I'm going to go ahead and cut two just so we have a before and an after. 
Ooh, I might get a slight thump. But let's try. And I'm just going to pick this up and do a whole 180 degree rotate just to keep it simple and send it on back. Ooh, come on. Ooh, am I off? Oh, I'm off. Okay, so I'm struggling getting it through because my plates are not centered. Oh yeah, I'm way off on my plates. Okay, so now I've centered my plates and now, oh yeah, see, look at that. See, if something is wrong, if the machine is hard to send it through, it's telling you, wait, take a look, something's not right. Okay, so let's push one out. Okay, so we're back to it just being kind of blah, kind of plain, nothing much to it. Let me see if I was able to salvage enough film to get another one out. Oh my gosh, okay. Don't look down, don't look down. Nope, darn it. All right, let's just grab another piece of vellum. Shucks. So, this is the vellum. It is called parchment vellum for a reason. It is super heavy. It is smooth. It is translucent. It is A2 size. You get 10 sheets and it's at an everyday low price of $7.99. And you can use it anytime you want to use vellum. You can always use heavier things for a lighter weight pr project, but you can't use lighter weight things for some for when you need a heavier weight project. Okay. Cut it down. I'm going to hold on to that so we have apples to apples. And you can just hear how thick it is in comparison to typical vellum. All right, let's bring this on over. Put it right down on top of my precision base plate. This time I can make sure that I'm at a nice angle. Make sure that everything is lined up and centered and send it on through. And I can do a rotate and send it on back. So remember, Vellum is a combination of kind of a plastic. It's a substrate. It's not a paper paper, but it's not a plastic plastic. It's it's kind of a hybrid. All right, so let's push out. Let's get out some of these big pieces. we go. So I'm back where I started. Plain, plain, plain. Now let's put it right back in our die. Let's let it kind of click into place. Let's grab our gush mat. And you can see the flowers come through the translucent of the vellum. And then I can take my stylus. Yeah, I'm in place. And I can start to go in there and add my detail. And again, I'm not going to do the whole thing. 
I'll do half so you can see the difference. But this will give you a big difference versus just using it with the beautiful Sizzix Opulent paper and your squishy and your knock knock. Totally different look, exact same dye. Just want to get in there and when I see that it's gone from translucent to white and no more red is peeking through at me, I know I can move on to my next little area. Instead of using a white marker and embossing tools and piercing tools to get this look, we've just, we've just taken a few little extra, some, some shortcuts. We've just kind of simplified it, but still giving you the opportunity to have this beautiful Pergamano look. And the dies were designed in a Pergamano type look. But I want you to see that if this is not for you, well, that whole first hour of this class <laughs> was spent on doing something completely different that had nothing to do with vellum and a stylus. Okay, so I think I'm about halfway done. I can see the white. It looks pretty good. If I don't like it, I can put it back in and go in and get a little closer on my edges. I always start on the on larger spaces. I always start with the edges and work my way in. So let's take it off. Okay. So there it is with the Pergamano. There it is without. With without. It is a dramatic difference without question. I'm going to do I'm going to do the other side and I'm just going to do the the top piece like I did here cuz then I'm going to color. And I want to be able to show you the difference between when you color when you use the memento inks to color versus just leaving it as a pergamano look. So let me do this side really quickly. Sorry, there is no magic of TV here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, so I don't have uh, these pre-done and off to the side and I just have to pull them out. This is a class and if you were taking a class, you would be doing this in the class with me. So the idea is that you're able to then get these products and then come back to this class and do it with me. We can be sitting here doing our stylus and making our Pergamano samples together. And it is just like, well, I'd like to think it's almost like having somebody right there in front of you. I know it's not the same exactly, but, <laughs> but that's okay. You can talk to me. I talk to you all the time. <laughs> We're friends now. <laughs> Do you watch do you watch Gilmore Girls? <laughs> or did you? It's like Little House on the Prairie for me. I know. I'm 53 years old and yes, I love Little House on the Prairie. They have good stories with good you know little teachable moments and I don't and and you just it, it's just a feel good program. There's no violence or I like that. I don't like being scared. I don't watch scary movies. So I'm okay. I have a hard time watching um, newer shows. <laughs> Some of them are so, oh, <laughs> a little too adult for me. <laughs> All right. So I've got this one. I've done the top. So that way we can 
now color and I'll color one side but not the other so you'll be able to see the difference. Now I'm not going to take the color like I did here and put it straight on because here I want to be I've got I want to be very delicate where I put the color. I don't want it to get all over my little flourishes. I want it just to go on the flowers. So we're going to go back to the beginning. We're going to put it back in the stencil and we're going to start where we were in the beginning. We're going to use this as a stencil. And where my flowers are coming through, where my flowers are coming through, I can then take my ink and color. And I'm going to use a memento, not stays on. I want to use this color and I just want to stain. I just want to stain my flowers. I don't want to use so much color that I leave it wet. I'm just looking to stain. I want to be able to pull this vellum out and have it basically dry. I'm trying to keep this vellum as dry as I possibly can. So I'll even do halfway in the middle. And I'm pulling that color down because it's allowing it to move. It's just staining. Okay, I think I've got some color in there. Now I can turn it back over again if I want to and hit it with my stylus one more time if I just want to make sure that I've got a really good emboss because that's what I'm looking for, a really good emboss. And because I stained it, I might have pushed them back down just a little bit so I can go in there and add, just touch up. Oh, I just poked through, oh, but you'll never notice. All right. Yep, I just poked through. By the time I put it down, nobody's ever going to see it. So here I've colored. And here I've just done my Pergamono. And here I've done nothing. Just Pergamono, Pergamono, and color. What do you like? See, and this is dry because I just stained it. Not, see, this is still, this is still wet. This I can still move. That's still wet. This one is dry because I just put the color down and stained the color. Stained my vellum, look at that. What do you like? You have options. If you don't like any of that, well then you can go all the way back to this. And if you're not crazy about that, you can just do this. And if you're not crazy about that, you can go back and do this. And if that doesn't work for you, well you can go back and do this. All of this can be done with all of these dyes. So many options so little time. <laughs> so then I could put it back in if I wanted to. Lock it back in place and come in and add my color to the top. Really, it's up to you. And finish it on out and just stain it. Hmm. You 
your decision, your die. So let's go back to the start. We started by just die cutting. I just die cut out of white and then I laid it on and used my mementos to go in there and stencil to give you a beautiful finished image. Then I took pattern paper and I die cut and then I used my squishy and my knock knock to allow me to go in and sand where that embossing is. See, no, no, no embossing, no sanding down there, but sanding there. Then I took my opulent paper and I just die cut. I don't know what I did with the other one. And then I die cut and I stenciled somewhere here it is. And then I die cut, I stenciled and I went, or I die cut, I die cut and then I used my squishy and my knock knock to give my embossing look. And then I used my, oh, wait, wait, nope, that's not it. So close. It's going to be here somewhere and I'll find it when we're all done. I just had it though, didn't I? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so cut it. Then I cut and used my squishy and my knock knock to make my embossing. And then I cut it. I used my squishy and my knock knock. And then I used my stencil and I used stays on to go on top because opulent paper is non-porous. And that's what I got. And then I took my my beautiful peacock and I did the the pergamono all the way around. And because there was no embossing on this die, or no stenciling on this die, I just took my little finger daubers and went in and took care of it. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. And then I went into really taking a much more detailed die and using my Pergamano elements to it so that you can see the white, you can see it colored, and here it is. This is what we started with, but what you can end up with is gorgeous, beautiful. You can do all of this with one die. And there's six in the set for $59.99. <laughs> okay. I still don't know. I just had it. I don't know, Stacy. Sometimes it's right in front of your face and you still can't see it. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Wait. So here it was with nothing. Here it is just embossed with the squishy and the knock knock. And then here it is embossed or cut embossed with the squishy and the knock knock and then colored as a stencil with stays on. Ta-da! Apples to apples to apples. Oh, that makes my heart so much happier. Okay, let me show you what's on sale as part of this week's YouTube Yummies. Remember, we're catching up on our older orders and getting out our newer orders just as quickly as we possibly can. We are still a skeleton crew here. So let's start with the dies. This is the die that sold separately. It is not part of the I Want It All bundle. It is the die that I used here on that red piece of paper. It's that die there. So if you want this one, it's sold all by itself. And then I have a tulip. And here are the storyboards. So here is the edge dies. And the tulip. Dramatic difference once you add the 
all the Pergamano effect to it. And then the rest of the dies in the collection are a part of the I Want It All bundle. So here we have my parasol. And the heart, see that looks so plain there. But then you start adding the detail to it or the embossing to it and it just changes the whole look of it. And then I have the peacock and the one I was using today. So here's the peacock. Now ours look dramatically different. These are for the storyboard and Elena does an amazing job for the storyboard. And then the last one is part of the I Want It All, and it is my fan die. You get so many different pieces in the fan die that you can mix and match and layer. Wait till you see some of the samples with the fan die. You may be going, oh, I don't think so. Wait till you see the samples. In fact, here is one of them from Sarah. Isn't that beautiful? This is Sarah's fan. So gorgeous. She didn't finish it into anything. She needs to make it into something. Beautiful, right? Okay, let's start with, oh, what else do I have for sale? We've got the, um, the marbling paper that I was using from P13 is on sale. We've got the styluses are on sale. We've got the parchment vellum at an everyday low price because it's my product. Uh, we'll do the mementos are on sale. The stays on will be on sale. The squishy, the knock knock will be on sale. The Oh my gosh, what else? The precision base plate will be on sale. We have the daubers that are an everyday low price because these are mine. You can't go wrong, $9.99 for 20 hand little finger daubers. And then we have the full set. So tons in the YouTube yummy, but let's get to samples. Let's start with Claire. Here's her parasol. That just needs to go up just a little bit. There we go. Here's her parasol. Here's a fan. All she did was cut and do the little pergamano and she's telling me to open it up. Happy birthday. And then we've got Hello, and she's used the P13 paper that I was using earlier as her background paper. And then look at she's used that P13 paper again. Look how beautiful and she put sequins and she did all the Pergamano work. Isn't that so pretty? Well done, Claire. And here are her tulips. And just simple, simple. Love, love, love here. Look at how beautiful is that. And this time she embossed with the opulent paper and she free handed the butterfly. She fussy cut that out, the opulent and then the hearts and flowers. That's Claire. Now let's do Elena, who also does the storyboards. Look it on the, this is actually my satin paper that she used. It's beautiful. So she used a lot of my satin paper. 
Oh, wait a minute. Is that... Wait, are these Sharon? Those are Sharon. No wonder she used my satin paper. Sharon. These are Sharon. Got to give credit where credit's due. Okay, Sharon. And Sharon and Elena's probably looking at this going, Stacy, those aren't mine. These are Sharon's. And I knew it because when I came to the blue, this is Sharon. I knew that right away. That just screams Sharon. Beautiful. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, Sharon, I'm sorry. Good thing you guys put your name on the back of them. Now I have Elena. Okay, yes, these are Elena, because Elena used a lot of the P13 paper. Look at this happy birthday with the border down here. Elena, gosh, you guys have all done such a beautiful job. This is all Elena. And look at, she's made five by seven cards for y'all. So you can do bigger cards. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at the next one. Although that looks really good, huh? I'm looking at the next one already. Love this Elena. Talk about a perfect piece of paper for that. Okay, these were all Elena. Then we have Doris, who has thought outside of the box. So my fan, okay, Doris, I see that the little mouse fit. <laughs> she texted Elena to find out when she got home. She, she wanted to know if Elena could check the card to see if her little, I bet that's a lawn fawn mouse. Look at, she took the fan and made a hot air balloon. Is that darling? And then here, look at this. This is stunning with the fan. And then sending love. And with the P13 paper coming through the vellum, because it is so bold, it will come through and show through the vellum. So pretty. And then thinking of you. Oh, and look at the Believe in Yourself used with the opulent paper. You all can do this. So this was Doris. Then we have a collection of everybody. And I have already showed you honorary SMS girl Katie. And the edge die. And the fan, now that you've seen the samples with the fan, the fan looks pretty awesome, right? And here, coloring the vellum. It's on vellum and then and colored just like we did. I just wanted you to know I'm thinking of you. And again, we use the Pergamano technique and then use the yellow to color after we've done the Pergamano. And opulent paper. Here's a hello using the two edge, the edge dies facing each other. Again, on the vellum, colored. And sending hugs. pretty she is. I love her. Sending hugs. And I've got a few more. Here we've paper pieced. This was done with the opulent paper. 
and then paper pieced part of the tulip back in place. Paper pieced the dots back in place. Here's our peacock. And love you. And for you with the fan. And hello. Again, paper piecing the tulips back in place. Hummingbird was fussy cut out of a paper. Butterfly might have been fussy cut out of a paper. Love this. And look at how beautiful it is in the opulent paper. If you don't have that opulent paper, oh my gosh. Oh, and look at this is beautiful. Again, where the openings are, paper piece the tulips back in and have all the pergamano going on and it's all colored. That's a happy card. And then last but not least, I've got a layout. Let me back it up just a little bit. A layout from Claire. So she's used the fan as feathers. So a layout from Claire. And an ultra mixed media from Elena. There's the fan. So Elena did this one I don't, October of 2018. There must have been something on here that we did in October of 2018. Maybe the flowers? I don't know. No, maybe it's under, I don't know. But she pulled it back out, the sample back out, and added the fan because it was perfect. So this is Elena making use of a previous sample. Job well done, Elena. That fan is just perfect for her. And then I have another layout from Claire. So you've got the Pergamano right here as an embellishment. Why can't you use them as your embellishment on your layouts? That's a darling layout. And last but not least, another layout from Claire where she's used the hearts. And she's got the hearts coming off the sides. Those are the fallout pieces. She's got the border here. She's got the hearts up here that came out from over there. She cut them, she snipped them out and used them up there. She's just got them all over and that's a fabulous layout too, Claire. Well done. All right, you guys, let me tilt on up. It was a lot, but it was good, right? I hope it was good. If it wasn't good, don't tell me. You don't have to tell me, I won't know. I'll just assume you think it's great. But I wanted to show you all the different ways you could use these dies. And being that they're in a Pergamono style doesn't mean they have to just do Pergamono designs. No, you saw how we used them with that opulent paper. You saw how I just used it with white paper and memento ink and stenciled it. Huh, dreamy. So, <laughs> where are you? Oh, the opulent paper's on YouTube yummies. I knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> Where are you going to find all of this great product? Well, if you can find the mementos and the stays on and even the opulent paper at your local independent mom and pop 
scrapbooking shop. Again, that does not mean Amazon.com. That means your, 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 your next door neighbor who owns your local store. Go shop with them first, and if not, then come online. We would love to have you as a customer. We appreciate and value your business. We just want to make sure that all of those other Stacy and Michaels, Mr. SMS and Mrs. SMS, all those other Mr. Mr. and Mrs. SMSs out there, that they keep their doors open too. It means a lot to me. So, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I am Stacy. I will see you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>